Hey what's up everybody, it's Dallas with Gadget Hacks, and today I'm going to show you how to root the Nexus 6P or Nexus 5X. Now this is going to be a longer video, so let's get straight to it. I'll be using Chainfire's new systemless root method to do this, which is exactly the same process as regular root, but it uses a different set of files. The main benefits of using this method are that so far, Android Pay seems to be fully functional if you do it this way. And since this doesn't modify the system partition, updating should be a tiny bit easier in the future. The only things you'll need for this method are a computer running Windows, OS X, or Linux, as well as a USB data cable. Speaking of, if you need a USB-A to USB-C connector, I have a list of compliant cables linked out at the full tutorial on GadgetX. But while I have the phone out, there's a bit of prep work you'll need to do on your Nexus. First, you'll have to enable the hidden developer options menu, which means taking a trip to about phone in settings, then tapping the build number entry seven times in rapid succession. While you're in here though, take note of that build number, since you'll need to make sure it matches up with the root files later. But once you've taken care of that, back out one level, then head to the developer options menu that you just unlocked. From here, and this is very important, make sure that the OEM unlocking option is enabled. After that, you'll need to download the SuperSU zip, which is the file that'll actually root your phone. And of course I have this linked out at the full tutorial, so use your phone to head to the link in the description below, then download the zip in step 3. But at this point you're done with Android, since the rest of the work will be done in bootloader mode. So from here, power your device completely off. When the screen goes black, press and hold the volume down and power buttons simultaneously. Within a few seconds, you'll see Android's bootloader menu, which is where you need to be. So leave it right there for the time being, then connect your phone to your computer with a USB data cable. From here, the next part of the process will be done on the computer, so let's head over there. Now the first thing you'll need to do here is install the Android SDK. The install process will vary depending on your operating system, but I have the download links as well as detailed installation instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux over at the full tutorial. But the main thing to note when you're doing that is the folder that the Android SDK is installed in. For Windows users, that'll be C, Program Files x86, Android, Android SDK. And for Linux and Mac, it depends on where you chose to install the SDK. So locate that folder on your hard drive, then open up the Platform Tools folder that you'll find inside of it. Then keep this window open for later, since we'll be copying a couple of root files over here. But next up, you'll also need to install the ADB and Fastboot drivers on your system so that the Android SDK can communicate with your Nexus. That's another file that you can download at the full tutorial, and installation is pretty straightforward for any operating system. From here though, it's time to get down to business. First, you'll need to download two files. One is a modified boot image that makes rooting on Marshmallow possible, and the other is TWRP Recovery. When you're downloading these files from step 3 in my tutorial, make sure that the build number listed there matches up with your phone's actual build number. Then if you're sure it does, copy both files, then paste them into that platform tools folder. You'll probably have to provide administrator access to paste the files in here, but that shouldn't be a big issue. Next, if you're using a Mac or Linux machine, open a terminal window and change directories to the Android SDK platform tools folder where you just pasted those files. Or, if you're using a Windows PC, just hold down the Shift button on your keyboard, then right-click any empty space in the Platform Tools folder, and choose Open Command Window here. Next, to make sure everything's connected properly, type Fastboot Devices, then press Enter. If this spits out a series of letters and numbers, that means you're good to go. Otherwise, there's a problem with your drivers, but you can find troubleshooting tips for that at the full tutorial. Now this next part will wipe all of the data on your device, so that's something to be aware of. But if you're ready, go ahead and type fastboot flashing unlock and press enter to unlock your device's bootloader. At this point, you'll see a menu over on your phone asking you to confirm your choice. Use the volume buttons to highlight yes when you see this, then press the power button to select it. Once you've done that, your phone will automatically perform a factory reset and reboot back into bootloader mode. So wait until it gets back to that green Android screen before you do anything else. But now that the bootloader is unlocked, you can flash the root files. So from that same terminal window, type fastboot flash boot boot.img and hit enter. This shouldn't take too long, but give it 30 seconds to complete the process. From here, type fastboot flash recovery twrp.img and hit enter. 
Again, it should only take a few seconds, but at this point, you've already installed the modified boot image and TWRP recovery. From here, we'll wrap things up over on the phone, so let me switch back to live video. Okay, so at this point, you can go ahead and disconnect the USB data cable, but be careful not to touch the power button while you're doing that. Because before you boot into Android, you want to run TWRP for the first time to make it your permanent recovery. So from here, press the volume down button twice to highlight the recovery mode option, then press the power button to select it. The first time you run TWRP, it's going to ask if you'd like to allow changes to the system partition. This is very important because otherwise Android would try to overwrite TWRP with its stock recovery, then TWRP would fight back and you might end up in a boot loop. So swipe this slider at the bottom of the screen to take care of that part, and from now on TWRP will be your permanent recovery. Next, it's finally time to actually root your phone. From TWRP's main menu, tap the install button, then use this file browser to select the SuperSU zip that you downloaded earlier. After that, just swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to flash SuperSU and root your phone. Then when that's finished, tap Reboot System. Then this next menu might freak you out because it's basically saying that your phone is not rooted. That's because TWRP isn't capable of detecting the new systemless root method, so it's not true. But the main thing to take away is to not swipe the slider when you see this screen, since that would install the old SuperSU on top of the systemless version and cause issues. Instead, if you ever encounter this menu, make sure to tap this Do Not Install button to leave things the way they are. Alright, so when your phone finishes booting back into Android, you should be fully rooted and good to go. If you'd like to verify that, download an app called Root Checker by developer Joey Krim. Basically, what you do with this one is press the Verify Root button, then grant the app super user access when prompted. At this point, you should see a message that says, Congratulations, root access is properly installed on this device, which means you're good to go. And like I said earlier, this new systemless root method even works with Android Pay so far, but that might change in the future if Google finds out about it. Another thing to be aware of is that you will lose root access if you factory reset your device, but if that happens, just flash the SuperSU zip again to get it back. And I know this was a lot to absorb from one video, so if you'd rather follow along at your own pace, head over to the full tutorial for written instructions. As always though, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking!